guys, Habanate here, and today we're back with another episode of Wrestling and Logic. And today uh, we're going to review Survivor Series. Uh, but as you can see, uh, you guys might ask, um, hey, where's Rail Sucker? Yeah, about him. We decided, if you look on Twitter, you'll see the whole statement. We decided to cut him off. Um, uh, kick him out, uh, you know, because, like, uh, he, he, it's been, kind of been building up since, like, middle of season one, you know, he would, like, ignore me and stuff, and, you know, use the F word, and s use gay as an insult, and now on his Instagram, he, um, he went and fat shamed a a woman who harassed him, um, who was apparently messing around with him, um, and, yeah, well, yeah, whatever is fine, she's messing with you, but don't, that doesn't mean go and fat shame her, and on top of everything else, uh, it, it's just a decision we had to make, uh, for the sake of this podcast, um, yeah, um, Anyway, uh, uh, Josh, Ben, you have any thoughts? Um, I don't really have... Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. You, you, you can speak first. Well, I don't really have a lot of um, thoughts. Like, I already knew this was kind of like... I didn't take this seriously. Like, I, I don't take some of his... like. Some of the things he says, I kind of just let it fly by. But as I begin to realize what's going on, um, like, uh, you know, I can, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit hard. I mean, I mean the guy is calling fighting girls for fuck's sakes. I mean, that's not that's not right. I mean, it's just that's just not right to anybody. That's not fair. And yeah, uh, thoughts about that. Um. Yeah, um, I re I remember when I had to step off for the first time, which was around well close to two well close to two years ago now, because of my own uh, mental health issues I was having quite severely at the time I will say. Um, so Habo decided to look for a new co-host to do it with him, you know, because I was, you know, unavailable. Um, and Ralsucker uh, was the one who got picked out. And, um... Uh, Ralsucker offered It started off... Mm, yes. Um, which he... Uh, well, you saying that now makes me question his intention to begin with, because um, he should have known not to be the way that he is um, for if he wants to be on here on a you know full-time basis um, but but yeah um, I do I do recall um, quite quickly afterwards that uh, I had a um, well not like a instant hate uh, not like an instant hatred towards him because that's a bit too far to take that too quickly yeah. but I, I did have my frustrations from the get-go with his homophobia and uh, the instances like that. And uh, yeah, I look, me and Ralsa could just never really got on well from the, from the start. Yeah. Um. So yeah, um, him being gone, I'm not surprised. Um. But. I'm not exactly sad either, to be honest. Uh, yeah. And I know, well, Sucker, you might be listening to this right now. Um, but, you know, I've just got to tell you, uh, I'm not sad that, that you're gone. Um, and, that, you know, I, I'm just going to move on. But um, I hope you mature over time. It, it took me a few years to mature. And I know what age you're at now. So I can understand a little bit why you're the way you are, but yeah. hopefully you mature. Even and, uh, maybe, 
maybe in a few months from now or a year from now, maybe if you're better, you could come back on. But Haber will have to, um, yeah, you know, you'll have, uh, you'll have to prove you have to prove yourself to me. And by the way, about his age, I uh, run about the same age uh, as him. I was also kind of like crazy and I was said some stuff that I regret and. Yeah, but now, especially this year, I've come to regret them. Um, and, you know, yes. try to be a better person and stuff. Um, like, I, I, I know that very well. Like, very yeah, well. Yeah, um, in like 2019, for like base, for no reason but the fact that Becky Lynch called herself the man, I was, I, I had this. I absolutely despised her for basically no reason, just because she called herself the man. Um, like, and I regret it so much. Uh, like, I, I'll. And by the way, don't give your kids social media until they're sixteen. That was a mistake I made. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah uh, um, if not eighteen, you know, just to be more on the safe side. Yeah. Because, yeah, unless you're going to be mature about it and not go crazy and say all stuff. Because that can hurt your rep reputation in the long run. People will remember you for thing type of things you said back then. Um, and they won't believe that you've changed no matter how much you do change. And, and that sucks. Um, and, yeah. I have a few friends that you don't know that you don't know about who uh, treat me like that, Pablo. So uh, I know completely what you mean by that. So yeah, treat you like how? Uh, so yeah. Well, you know, like myself. yeah, like uh, as you as you just said, Pablo, um, you were once a certain way to people, and if you want to change well they they just don't see it unless you really like force it in their face but but even then they still might not see it you know because um i remember um in 2014 when i left school um uh there was a lot of friends i had who saw me as a dropout as a no as as someone who wasn't in touch with with reality. Oh, um, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying they were wrong for that perception at the time, but I will say that I have tried to persuade them otherwise since then, and they've just not given me the time of day at all. Um, so, yeah, uh, to your point there, um, I understand that very, very well. Um, yeah. I have, I have, so. I know a couple of people myself. You know, they they mistreat me wrong too. You know, they say some, they've done some mad racist things to me, and I was like, you know oh. what? At the end of the day, yeah, they were making fun in, about my race and shit. I was like, oh you know what? Fuck y'all. You're, you're better off. You're better off on the side of the bridge somewhere. Fuck y'all. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, not to jump off, right? Oh no, no, just. Somewhere on the side of the road where I cannot see you. That's that's. Oh, all. okay, good. Not what I said. <laughs> all right. We do Take not. that completely a different level. We do not condone suicide on this podcast. And he did that too, that. Raw no. sucker. He told people to kill themselves. Yeah. That's one. That's oh, another well. thing. Clearly, he wasn't paying attention when he said that. Yeah, uh, I did see a few instances of that. Uh, and yeah, uh, at least you won't have to worry about hearing any more F-bombs and stuff. Yeah, enough about him. Let's move on to Survivor Series. Unless, Ben, you have any news? Well, um, I don't really have any news at the moment. I already made... Uh, Mysteries of Life Season 3 is coming out in April. 
No, don't worry, everybody. There won't be. There will be a New Year's episode, and there will be bonus episodes filling in into season three. Don't worry mm-hmm. about that, guys. There will be more content. So, like special one-off episodes, like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you said news. Um, Danhausen oh. was yeah. in a situation that I was clearly not pleased with um, the, the, the other day. Um, apparently, his car got hit in the parking lot of, I think, the airport, I think it was. Huh. And... Um, there was a article that basically got me thinking, oh, wait, so Danhausen was was in the car as it happened? So is he okay? Is he, is he injured? Just to find out, he was never even in the car to begin with. And the articles led me to believe that he was... Uh, Whoever is doing the reporting, please do your flipping job and seek the evidence, all of it, before you type a single word into your goddamn articles. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, it's yeah. It's called, uh, Josh, it's called clickbait, bro. Yeah. It's called clickbait. Yeah, dude. Do not stand for that. And also, they spent like half the flipping article talking about matches he's had on flipping dynamite. What's that got to do with the, with the inc- with the incident his car had? Yeah. Flipping wrestling journalists, my they're, ass. They're called dirt sheets, Josh. Well, I wonder why. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so that's a new thing that happened yeah, re- recently. And by the oh, way, yeah, I'm... there's another thing that happened, uh, which you reminded me of. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Eric Young was killed off of Impact. They they killed him dead. They st- <laughs> they stabbed him in prison. How did he get dead to begin with? That is my question. How does do they? Gotta, how do you, you got arrested? <laughs> how do you book? You got arrested. <laughs> how do you book a person getting I'm in prison? I'm gonna go on a rant. Right. That was the dumbest fucking thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Whoever approved of that on live national television, y'all should be fired on the fucking spot. That's ridiculous. Young being stabbed in fucking prison made no sense. And how the fuck is he going to join AEW or WWE when he got fucking stabbed to death? Who does this? And who writes this shit in Impact Wrestling? Who watches Impact? <laughs> Out of here. Yeah. Don't worry, Ben. He'll use John Cena's ma- magical healing powers and and he'll be good to go by next week. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me. Be- because wrestling, right? It has no logic ever. And yeah, it's all a big TV show. I've always hated that. Well, over the course of this podcast, wrestling being treated like a TV show. That's what these guys are doing in Impact. Why is this company still existing? It's, it's I don't know why they exist, but it's the Vince McMahon effect. Oh, wrestling must be a Hollywood drama, damn it! And Vince We've Russo. got to compete with programs like Friends! That's not even a wrestling show. That's completely I know, different. but... I know, but there was a report going around that the reason he hired um, the Hollywood, you know, creative writers to begin with is because he wanted to compete with with other programs such as Friends. That is why he hired them to begin with. Yeah. Anyway, back to Impact. This 
This companies like Sarah Tancredi, it refuses to die. If you watch Prison Break, you know what I mean. I'll get around to it eventually. I promise I will. It it is on it, it is on my list. For ten years job, apparently. Wait, I'll get around to it. I did. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Um, on to Survivor Series. Um, and yeah, with the first match being the women's war games match between Team Bianca Belair. Of course, consisting of Bianca Belair herself, Oscar, Alexa Bliss, Mishin, Mia Yim, and Becky Lynch. Uh, are, are they alternating between Mishin and Mia Yim, or is it just Mishin? Um, you know, you know, like um, um, Seth has Seth freaking. Rollins as his middle name now. Yeah. Well, I think, I think Mishin is like a n- nickname of sorts. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. I hope that they that they don't change it to that. I hope they don't book. I hope they don't write the fucking script that says Mishin. They should call her by her name of Mishin. Your name is Mia Yim, not fucking Meechin. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and anyway, uh, the, it's Team Bianca Belair versus... Sorry. Bitch, come on. Sorry, you guys. I was just busy fixing something up. Uh... Bianca versus Damage Control. It was um Yeah, I'll I'll be get to that. Team Bailey. Um Damage Control consisting of Bailey herself, EO Sky and Dakota Kai, Rhea Ripley and Ni- Nikki Cross. Um it's, B- it's Bianca Belair and Dakota Kai first in the ring. Uh EO Sky comes in after five minutes. Uh, d- these are like short, simple, like cliff notes. It's not full notes, so it might if we skip over some stuff, you know why. Um, Belair did a double suplex on um, EO and Dakota Kai. EO did a missile drop kick on Bianca Belair into Asuka. She and EO did Young Bucks gymnastics, which I didn't like. Uh, Dakota Kai wildly missed the kick. She tried to stomp one of the ladies and then missed like so far. They did. She didn't even try. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then enter Alexa Bliss and then enter <laughs> Bailey. Match goes on. Um, Alexa Bliss did a comeback. Or should I say cold tag sequence of moves? Damage control put a table in between the two rings where Belay is sitting and they crushed her with it. They pushed it into her. Um, I made a little sketch if you know, it needs to be elaborated. Uh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> that's, that's. Well, uh, you are the artist, so. That's Bianca Belay right there. Uh, no, no, yeah, that, that's Bailey. I think that's uh, the co- that that's damage control on the side. Uh, yeah, so I made the uh, the what? On a, the, for all the Spotify for all the Spotify listeners, um, Cabo was showing us a drawing of a uh, a ring of two rings, right? And yeah. there's a table in between the rings. So, yeah. and he was showing the two the two women, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, that was a whole point. Yeah, Bianca Belair got point? crushed on on the table. Mm. Okay, go on. Uh, to that point about Spotify, uh, I I don't know if you've noticed recently, um, guys, but um, I have started to upload uh 
on the audio platforms, the video formats. So I will be going back in time to have all the other episodes, the original the video formats that they were. So cool. Just, just, just for you to know, in case you didn't. Cool. I did. Uh, I th- and by the way, that table spot um, was, I thought that was creative and unique. Um, enter Rhea Ripley. <laughs> um, she comes in and beats everyone up. Probably the best part of the match. Match goes on. Uh, enter Becky Lynch uh, and then enter Nikki Cross. And Becky Lynch, she had this big ass shoulder pad protruding off her shoulder and I'm like when she gonna take that off L- looks so weird <coughs> somebody's gonna get caught on it and uh, but like whatever uh, she l- Becky Lynch leg drops EO Sky wore metal trash can on the head kind of reminiscent of the war games match um, about two years ago she did a moonsault off the war games cage uh it was still in NXT, the MT Arena era. Yes. And yeah, when they we sh- reviewed that yes, one. Yes, we did. And they were shaking the fences, and it drove me mad. That's the only thing I remember. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they teased the Tower of Doom, which kind of ticked me off. But luckily, they broke it up, and it didn't happen. Bianca Belair did a terrible powerbomb to Bailey. Could have broken her damn neck. Um, and then um, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss handcuffed each other. Um, uh, I was hoping Nikki could <coughs> could have handcuffed um, Bliss to the cage so that she's out the match. Um, enter Mia Yim. She puts a sleep on Rhea Ripley. Uh, she slams her and I almost said Bobby Lashley because he, he did something similar in the match later. Um, Rhea Ripley slams Mia Yim into a ladder that Bailey brought in. Uh, Belair and Becky Lynch stood together, which was nice. And then um, they stared down damage control. Then Becky leg dropped. Um, on EO and Dakota Kai for the win. I gave Raslin an 8 and Logic a 6. What did you guys think? <coughs> you, do you want me to go first or do you want Ben to go first? Yeah, yeah, you can go me? first. Okay. Alright, okay. Um, uh, I'll try and say this nicely because I have done like a two and a half hour <laughs> to rant about this about a week or so ago. So I'll just try and be um, succinct about this now. Um, look, basically, uh, wrestling, I'll give it a six or seven. Right. Logic, I'll give, I don't know, two. She has to be nice. Okay. Um, I thought you would give it a one or uh, a zero. No, I'll give it a two just to be nice. Oh, you know, cause, you know. Um, Generosity. To me, this match, I didn't give much care for because the first half an hour, nothing at all mattered. It, did, it didn't matter if they did a hundred tombstone pile drivers in a row. There was no pinfall, there was no submission, there was no f- nothing. Why should I care? Oh, but Josh, they're setting up the ending, they've got to do the damage to their opponents. Just... The match doesn't even start until the final entrance has, has entered the ring. So technically, it was like a training session or a um, lights out match or an unsanctioned match, as AEW calls it, for the first half an hour. It didn't matter. N- nothing mattered. So there was no pinfall. Th- there was no consequences. There was no fear factor for the first half an hour. That's the way I saw it, because that's the way it is to me. I. 
uh, whoever was last came in, I think it was Becky, maybe. Um, yes, it, yes, it, yes, it was Becky. The bell rang, finally. I was like, oh, so now the match starts. So why have I even bothered to watch the first half an hour then? Like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. But yeah, um, I'll give it a logic of two because they followed with their own rules of the match that they've given it. So I have to give credit at some point to it. Okay. Um, so I... But I will say just to quickly, quickly add on, uh, Michael Cole did say before the entrance even happened that this is this year's rulings of the match. It could change by the next time it happens. Mmm, it's a little beacon of hope, maybe. Yes. Okay. But, uh, but uh, other than that, this match can go take a whiz, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, so you did watch it. Yes. Uh, watched it too, Josh. Uh, Three times. Yeah. Damn, really? <laughs> yes, I had to. I had to make sure I was watching. I was watching. I had to make sure. Okay. Uh, oh, wrestling, uh, I'll, give it, um, I'll give it a six. Yeah, sorry. Logic one. You're fine. Sorry, Josh, you were one, a point, damn. Well, the only logic in the match was Becky Lynch winning the match. That was it. <laughs> what, <laughs> as Josh mentioned early on, what the fuck is the... Where's the logic in war games anymore? Winning didn't put the logic in there, Ben. I will say, do, do you know why? Because it didn't matter who won the match. There was a champion on, on either team. And so a champion was going to lose inevitably, which to me should be a... Uh, pu pu uh, should be a... Punishable by uh, j jail time. <laughs> so. Damn. <laughs> Which is why I will say before we go to our next match, yeah. retire the women's tag team fucking titles. That's all. Please. I'm not going to say this again. Retire the tag team titles. Women's versions, please. Do no value to damage control. They add no value. They add no kind of um fucking urgency. There's no tag team division. I'm tired of fucking belts. Next match. Yeah. Ben. Who lost on Raw in that singles match? Oh yeah, the Kota Kai. No, and I'm gonna talk about that match. The Wrigley Wrestling Round. I'm gonna talk about that match. Get me started. That that was fucking boring as fuck, and she lost clean. Terrible. Next match. I did. Next match. AJ Styles with the OC versus Finn Balor with the Judgment Day. Uh, they do a video package. Which is good as always, and Finn Balor's promos have improved. Um, uh, the match is, match starts. They do some chain wrestling, and then something that just popped into my mind: Judgment Day versus OC should have been the War Games match. It's got a bigger story, a better build, but no, they would rather do Bloodline versus Brutes. Less than a month's build, and little to no history between either team, except maybe McIntyre and Roman, uh, Drew and Roman, or and Sheamus and Roman, you know, because League of Nations and that stuff. Um, yeah, what do you think? You, what do you guys think about that? Uh, about the League of Nations? That was a piece of shit. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> That shit was terrible. Get that shit off my television. Whoever uh, approved that should have should have been should have been exonerated. Fuck out of here. Exonerated. Exonerated means you, you you get out of jail. 
Oh, you get <laughs> Azano read it and put back in jail. Fuck him. <laughs> that, that was terrible. Insane. But anyway, uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, I was no, not the League of Nations, but uh, Judgment Davis OC <laughs> being the men's war game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I thought it was. Um, I like. Okay, it has been building up. I can agree. I see why they did it because they're on the poster. If they're not on the show, you know, it's going to be pretty much clickbait at this rate. You don't, they don't want to disappoint the fans. That's cool. Just the fact that the Bloodline and the Brawling Brutes really, they've been feuding for how how long now? Yeah. Months now? I mean, I don't feel like that deserved a war game spot. Now, I see why it's the main event. I do not agree with having with it having a two-month build all the way to war games because then we're rushing into war games. We should not rush into war games. Everything should come naturally. And I feel like the Judgment Day and OC, um, if they were in war games, but they would not be the main event of the show. And that's my opinion, obviously. But I feel like they would be like the big main event of the show. Plus, one gripe with war games... No blood in war games. Yeah, that, that, that and Hell in a Cell and most cage matches in WWE. Oh. No blood. Oh. You can't. I'm not saying everyone should blade. But no, there's no blood. Yeah, I can't believe I'm still quoting this guy. Uh, well, not really quoting him, but you can't have blood. Don't have the match. You you don't want the fat. Don't eat the Twinkie. Yeah. That, that seems fair. But anyway, this was the second best match on this entire show. Yeah. Easily. AJ and Finn. I'll go on. I'll go on. Um, uh, the match went on, and then um, AJ Styles did a sunset flip on Finn. Uh, no, and then AJ did a sunset flip, and then Finn Balor did a basement drop kick. That was nice. Uh, Finn Balor did a domino stretch. Um, Judgment Day and OC fight off. I didn't really like that. Finn Balor did a sling blade. And yeah, um, AJ Styles wins. This is a good match. But um, Judgment Day has taken two losses in total. The Women's War Games, Rhea Ripley, and this match. Two losses in one night. Now, how does that make them look? And like just like before Triple H came in. They were losing everything. Yeah, uh, I gave wrestling an eight and logic a five. What did you guys think? Give this an eight and a half. Oh. Okay. Wrestling eight and a half and logic, I'll give it a six. That, that was my best rating. And um, I, I thought this was the second best match on the show. I thought these guys actually put on a great match despite the horrible Boston crowd. Terrible. No reaction for neither of their moves. Terrible. Wait. Don't, don't, don't call them terrible crowd just yet. Because okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm res I'll reserve my judgment for the crowd. But that crowd was fucking dead to rights for this match. Well, they should have been cheering for, at this least match, for this match. Literally. At least for this match. Then, yeah. They should have been cheering for this match. Yeah, Josh, what do you think? Um, well, to your point about the crowd, um, this, I mean, AJ Styles and Finn Balor is a match that most fans would have been clamoring to see for the past few years now. Yeah. Um, because to my understanding, They've not had a one-on-one a -on -one since TLC 2017, I believe, when Correct. Finn was the demon. And the only reason that match even happened to begin with is because Bray Wyatt, who was going to be dressed as Sister Abigail, was off sick for, for that time period. So uh, Vince had to put in a replacement <coughs> opponent for the pay-per-view, uh, which... which Thank God, because who in the muck would want to see 
uh, Bray Wyatt wrestling as Sister Abigail at that time. Who? Vince wanted Bray Wyatt. Vince wanted Bray Wyatt in cross drag. This man wanted him in drag wrestling as Sister Abigail. That's Vince is no longer in charge. Um, look, uh, I, I, I don't mind drag. Um, yeah, me but neither. What I do have an issue with. I'm not, I'm not insulting is, nobody. Me neither, Josh. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm just saying, um, to your point there, I don't mind drag at all. I think it's fine. Um, but I do have an issue with Bray Wyatt um, in that match specifically portraying a character which he te- which he um, shouldn't be involved in because that's not a character that he himself would be playing. It, 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 it's a... I don't know if, I, if that makes sense, but... Um, remember, and... remember th- literally three years ago <laughs> when 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 we all thought Liv Morgan was gonna be Sister Abigail. Oh man, that, it oh, was man, good times. <laughs> good times. Indeed. You all thought she was gonna be Sister Abigail. Yeah, I did. Are you fucking <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> When she finally debuted, she only went there for Bobby Lashley and Lana's wedding. Uh, that horrible feud, love triangle thing. Oh my shit god. Shit was get off my fucking TV material. Yeah. That shit was terrible. Yeah. A waste of Bobby Lashley. Anyway, god, he's better. Um, in regards to this match, uh, I'm quite surprised that the crowd didn't respond to it in the way that I thought they would, considering it's a match that most would have been clamoring to see for a long time now. Yeah. Regardless of how bad the booking has been. Um, Thanks for this match for 10 years, bro. Yeah, um, and and I will say, the match was fine. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for the wrestling, and Logic, I'll give... I'll be nice and say a 5 or 6. Um, Finn Balor should have won, bar none. Yeah. Finn should have won. Yeah. The the, I really like AJ. He's 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 in my top ten, if not top five of all time. Yeah. But Finn needed this win to cement a major victory for the group he's in that that he's not had. Since the inception of the group, if not at all. Because you said, Jado, that um, they've not really won much um, during the time that Vince was booking. Well, how many times have they won since Triple H took over? That's at the castle. They lost the very important tag match there. That's, a, that, that's an example. Um, I can't even remember if they were even on Extreme Rules or not because of how bad the booking was. Been. Uh, yeah, I, can't, I can't remember. Finn Balor Edge, I quit match. Finn Balor won because he made uh, Edge. I quit because they were gonna <laughs> beat the fucking shit out of Beth Phoenix. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't really re- remember it since how bad the booking has been. Um. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Finn needed this win, like beating Edge in the I Quit match. And then beating AJ here, and then going on to beat someone else. I mean, wasn't there a report that Triple H is very high on Finn Balor, and he wants to use him very seriously as a main eventer? And yet he, and yet he does 50-50 booking with him, and that's saying that nicely. Mm. Like, uh... the entire match was 50-50 booking, though. I feel like AJ Styles to me. I feel like AJ is bulletproof in some way, in some shape and form. AJ can take a loss. People don't think AJ Styles can yeah. lose. AJ Styles can lose. Yeah. He can lose clean. I was thinking Like he that. sucks. I mean, as, as Josh said, you have a good point. Finn Balor hasn't won a match. Finn Balor has won matches on Raw. Let me, let, I, I review Raw, so I, I know what it's like. Finn <clears throat> Balor's been winning matches on Raw. 
not, he has not been winning at pay-per-views. Clash of the Castle lost. Stream Rules lost. Um, Stream Rules was in October. Survivor Series he lost here, so he has lost two out of three matches ever since Triple H has taken over. It's unacceptable. Yes, and I will say this before we move on to whatever's next. I think it's the triple oh, no. match. I think okay, no, no, it's not. It's 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 Wanda. Yeah. And that absolute not nonsense. Yeah. Um, I will say this: <laughs> if um Finn Balor and the and the Judgment Day as a whole were basically undefeated as a group since their inception all the way to now, with having ma- maybe one or two losses. Um, I would be a lot more acceptable for him to have lost uh, at Survivor Series against AJ. But because of how much they've lost, which is which is, which is probably around 50% of the matches they've had in total, I mean, I can't accept this. No. Like, why am I supposed to believe Survivor in him series. now? Um, uh, before the Survivor I'm Series... Si- Sorry, Josh. I don't mean to cut you off. My bad. Look, okay. Before Survivor Series, let me, me let me point this out. Let me paint a picture, a bigger picture here. Balor faced the Judgment. No, the Judgment Day faced the Brawling Brutes before Survivor Series on Raw. Judgment Day lost. Sheamus pinned Dominic Mysterio. They lost. And then they go into Survivor Series. They lose to AJ Styles. And they lost the to Bianca Belair's team. Rhea Ripley technically lost. Yes. Yeah, she did. You're ridiculous, bro. Y'all gotta do better with Judgment Day. This is my last this is my last time I'm gonna say it. Now we gotta move on. <laughs> Apologize, Josh. I'll catch you. If they lose uh, one more time, I don't same, know what I'm gonna do. Uh and that's <laughs> the same Dominic Mysterio who only joined the Judgment Day for oh that's right, no reason at all. Yeah, anyway, um, the next match for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Ronda Rousey with Shayna Baszler versus Shotzi Blackheart. Please give Shotzi her full name back. So now Shayna is Ronda's lap dog, and and I, I get that it's about the four horsewomen of MMA, but Like, talk about a fall from grace. She goes from dominating the NXT women's division to being a lap dog for Ronda Rousey. And I'm not knocking Shayna Baszler when I say that. I still think she's great. Um, The match starts. uh, It goes on and goes on. Um, Shotzi does does a dive on Ronda. Goes on. um, She goes and fights with Shayna Baszler on the outside, did a dive on Planted Fan, and she didn't get a DQ for that. Uh, Ronda Rousey did an avalanche slam. That was at least nice. Then she dominated Shotzi and won the match. And this match was not great. I gave Rasson a 3 and Logic a 1. And, um... And I don't, and I hate that I have to give it such a low rating. I hate that I have to give a women's match such a low rating, but it really is that bad. What did you guys think? Quick thoughts, cause um, yeah, we gotta wrap this up Zero. sooner than later. <laughs> Zero, damn. Zero. Zero. <laughs> um, there was a hashtag on Twitter saying "fire Ronda Rousey" for a bit, so. <laughs> Ronda, Ronda Rousey is still employed, as Ben would Jesus say. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Damn, two liter of Coca Cola Cherry is better than Rowdy Ronda Rousey's women's title run right now. Get off my fucking TV! You suck, man. Hang on, no rating. We... Terrible. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> We Next gotta, match. We gotta count how many times you say get off my TV. Hey. I, re- I, I, I count my own time. I count my own get off my TVs. She's awful. Ronda Rousey's title run is terrible. Shayna Baszler needs to turn babyface expeditiously babyface. after the Royal Rumble. 
damn, okay. <clears throat> Turn her baby face, bro. I'm not fucking with Shana, with heel Shannon Baszler. Turn her into a good woman and then turn her back heel. I think. Just do it. <laughs> okay. I guess anything to get away from Ronda Rousey would be good. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to go on anymore. A backstage segment with the un undisputed Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. He had a chat with the honorary Oos Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn Fantastic. allegedly talked with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens said Sami Zayn should leave the bloodline, and Sami lied to Jay about it. And then Roman went on to say some stuff, and then he said, This is my family. And then they were talking some more, and you know, they came to an agreement, and then they hugged it out. Um, so, yeah, that was nice. Um, and now the next match. This match. For the United States Championship, a triple threat match between Bobby Lashley versus Seth Rollins, the champion, versus Austin Theory. Um, <coughs> Lashley clothesline Theory over the... I took full notes for this match. Lashley clothesline Theory over the top rope. Rollins also did that. Lashley beat up Rollins and gave him a neck breaker. Austin Theory is all serious now, but I still can't really fully take him seriously because, you know, they should take him, taken him off TV for a while and then brought him back and then made him more serious. Um, and besides, he had just come off the heels of having an unsuccessful Money in the Bank cash-in. And then um, wow. Lashley beat up Rollins and Theory. He firemen's carried Theory and smacked Rollins with him. They fought on the outside. Uh, Rollins and Theory got back in the ring. Theory did a nice drop kick for a two count. He beat up Rollins. Then he beat up Lashley. Did had a one two with uh, Seth Rollins. Um, Rollins hit a sling blade and then a super kick. That was nice. Uh, Theory and Lashley got turn, took turns getting dived on by Rollins. Then they both got dived on. Uh, they replayed that. Um, the crowd sang Rollins' theme song. Ooh, ooh, and the crowd was loving it. See, Ben, this crowd isn't so bad. That's why I told you to reserve your judgment. Uh, Theory goes for a drop kick. Rollins countered with a power bomb, uh, which was nice for a two count. Rollins teased a curb stomp. Lashley pulled Theory out the way. Lashley hit a nice, massive choke slam. He put in the hurt lock. Then um, Theory put the uh, sleeper on him simultaneously. Uh, Lashley put the hurt lock on Seth Rollins. <coughs> Lashley dumped Theory out the ring, uh, as, I, as I alluded to back in the Women's War Games match, where I almost said, I almost called Rhea Ripley Bobby Lashley, because she also slammed, um, she dropped uh, Mia Yim off her back onto a ladder. Um, Rollins hit a pedigree, I think, on um, Lashley for a near fall. He missed a corkscrew moonsault, landed on his feet. Theory hit a rolling blockbuster. He tried to hit A Town down, but Lashley escaped and put on the hood lock. Theory got a pin escape. Rollins did a splash for a near fall. And the, this is where the match really started to ramp up. They were all laying down selling. They replayed this the last few moments. Theory missed a lariat. He elbowed Rollins, and Rollins hit an insiguri. He hit a rolling forearm. Theory hit a stiff punch. Rollins and Theory tried to hit each other's move. Lashley put a headlock on both of them. Then they broke it up. Lashley missed a spear. Rollins super kicked Lashley. He punched Theory in the back of his neck. He teased curb stomp. And then he did the curb stomp, but he used Theory as a footstool. 
and then stomped on Lashley. That was very cool. Um, Theory broke up the pin. Rollins hit a superplex. He tried to do a falcon arrow right after, as he did to Edge at SummerSlam last year. Uh, but then Lashley speared Rollins. And then Theory pinned Rollins to win the U.S. title. This match was a certified banger. Absolute certified banger. I gave Rasslin a 10 and Logic a 9. What did you guys think about this match? Match of the night. And Damn I am the right. one saying that. Damn right it was. Wrestling, I'll give a nine, uh, which is very generous, like as far as I'm concerned. And uh, logic, I'll give an eight, uh, and that's quite high in terms of my standards. So, I mean, praise be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was one of the better triple threat matches I've seen, and probably one of the best matches of the whole year. Now, before Ben answers, did it have the correct winner? Um, uh, not exactly. <laughs> but uh, how, from how good the match was, I'm willing to discredit that. Okay. Uh, well, I think this match was fine. Uh, well, not fine. I think this match was great. Um, is this a match of the year candidate? I would say so, yeah. Um, I give Raslin nine. Logic, nine. Everything made sense. And right person won. That's oh, why. Okay. Austin Theory did not need money in the bank. Austin Theory didn't need money in the bank. He was already a certified made man. He was already, you know, on his way up there anyway. Now, they booked Boy, him fucked why? up. Mm, yeah, because of a uh, <clears throat> name and address withheld, obviously. But still, <laughs> look, they're they they're making Austin Theory serious, yeah, and I can good. absolutely find that. I think Austin Theory will be a great United States champion because now he has a baby face stuff. Well, tweener stuff, Rollins. I, I, I'm not gonna call him a baby face yet. Between herself, Rollins, he has um, Lashley, who is about to, who, who's really a babyface, honestly. He's not a heel. He's a babyface. Uh, he has Rollins, Lashley, Mustafa Ali. He has all these other talent that Mustafa Austin Theory can Ali face. Mustafa Ali still employed? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, but he has to win matches. Does Mustafa Ali to earn a U.S. title shot? Let's get that out of the way. He has to win matches because he has lost every, nearly every match ever since he's gotten back. In this way, Austin Theory has a lot of talent, a lot of potential, and a lot of upside to him. All that matters now. You gotta book him against credible and logical opponents. The only thing I ask out of this entire title reign, and I do not want this title reign to end at WrestleMania. I want it to be longer. One awesome theory to have a long title reign, have it end at SummerSlam, and have whoever, maybe, maybe uh, Rollins down the line. You know, they can take Rollins off of TV, maybe, but that's here nor there. But have Austin Theory lose the belt to someone who's up and coming and to someone who deserves it a lot more than all the other guys. That makes sense to me. And lose at SummerSlam. Have it at that. thoughts yeah what do you think oh josh i think you gave your thoughts already okay you did josh gave an answer already <coughs> I, I, did, yeah. I, did. I did without further ado main event the main event the men's war games match uh between the bloodline uh consisting of roman reigns the undisputed universal champion with ones uh the usos um, Jay and Jimmy, uh, Sami Zayn, and um, Solo Sokoa, um, the newest, one of the newest members, uh, against um, 
Oh, and the Brawling Brutes, um, consisting of Seamus Butch, who should be Pete Dunne, as Ben mentioned, um, and Ridge Holland, and with Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre. Um, Kevin Owens comes out, uh, followed by Drew McIntyre, uh, followed by the Bloodline, um, Hey, the Brutes, did the Brutes come out? I must have skipped them, but... Brutes came yeah. out after uh, Drew. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, whole, the, blood the whole bloodline came out, and it's Jey Uso and Butch starting. The match oh starts. And Jey and Butch were talking shit to each other. They finally clash. He was looking at his ass um, wool. Yeah, Butch wrenched Jey's fingers. He... He's focusing on the fingers. Jay finally shoots Bush off into the cage. Hits a nice neck breaker. Targeting Butch's bad arm. Um, <coughs> Butch goes for Jay's hand. Wildly misses. Jay slams Butch. Enter Ridge Holland. He makes a comeback. Jay does a thrust kick. And slaps Ridge Holland. Ridge uh, does a body slam. He runs into Jay in the corner multiple times. Brawling Brutes do a double team. Uh, Butch manipulates the hand of Jay again. Ridge holds him. Um, Brutes working together to beat up Jay. Jimmy Uso was going to come out, but then... Roman Reigns sent Sami Zayn out instead um, and enters a nervous Sami Zayn who walks slowly to the ring. Brutes were ready for Sami Zayn long enough for Jey Uso to recover and then he arm dragged Butch. Ridge uh, head palms shoot off uh, Jay into the other ring. Sami Zayn beat up Ridge Holland, stomped on him. Had a back and forth with Ridge, Ridge Holland. Jay Uso helped him out. Sami Zayn and Jay argued. Uh, Butch hit a moonsault. Ridge beat up Jay Uso. Um, uh, into Drew McIntyre now. Uh, and he beat up Jay and Sami Zayn. Uh, he threw Sami Zayn across the ring like a rag doll. Did a spine buster on Jey Uso. Did a su tried to do a superplex, but then uh, Sami Zayn interrupted. Ridge um, punished him and put him away. Drew was in the tree of woe, and then he literally does a pull-up. Uh, not a pull-up, but a sit-up from the tree of woe and threw Jey Uso um, away, which was nice. Then he hit a future shock DDT on Sami Zayn. Enter Jimmy Uso, who brings three tables into the ring. Sami Zayn and Jay are fighting. Brutes attack them. Uso slam Drew into the cage. Jimmy does a nasty punch to Butch. The bloodline beat up Drew McIntyre. Uh, Jimmy and Sami Zayn tried to suplex Drew into the table, uh, but he uh, pushed them away. And now into Kevin Owens. He brings chairs in, beat up the Usos with a chair, uh, did a DDT on Jimmy Uso on the chair, did a can cannonball on Jay, and did a swanton bomb on him. Um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are eyeing each other. Um, and then chaos ensues. Uh, Kevin Owens put Jimmy through a table. Enter Solo Sokoa. Solo Sokoa does a lariat on Butch. He's fucking up the brutes. Solo and Kevin Owens have a stare down. They, he, they did a, a nice one too. They were beating the crap out of each other. Then he had a one two with Drew McIntyre. And now Drew hit a flying head butt. And now enter Seamus. <coughs> Sami Zayn blocked the entrance. Seamus eventually busted in. Did a comeback on the bloodline. The brutes smashed into the bloodline. They 
They lined up her against a cage. Sheamus did an avalanche white noise and now enter Roman Reigns. The two teams stared each other down. Then they all clashed together and fought each other. Roman Reigns, yeah. Superman punched Sheamus. He teased a spear, but then um, Sheamus stopped him. Sheamus tried to hit something. I didn't oh, write it down fully. Oh, he tried to hit 10 beats of the Bodron. And then the Brutes all do 10 beats of the Bodron. Sheamus does a bro kick to Solo Sokoa. Roman speared him, I think, through the table. Uh, I, she maybe not. No, uh, I don't even know. Ridge. So, Roman speared Ridge Holland th through the table in the corner. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, my mistake. Uh, Sami Zayn went off the butch. Jay accidentally super kicked Sami Zayn. Um, Usos did an avalanche 1D, which was nice. He super kicked Ridge. Um, Roman Reigns speared Ridge. Um, they replayed the last few oh. moments. They all laid down selling. Solo put Drew through the table. Kate and Kevin Owens did a stunner on Solo. Tried to pin Solo, but then Roman pulled Kevin Owens off. Then they had a uh, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens had a stare down, and that was a callback to their feud back in 2020 and uh, uh, early 2021 with that BS match at the Royal Rumble. Josh, I'm sure you remember that. We reviewed that. Kept getting up, man. Man, that standing. That, that match was actually kind of a life lesson if you think about it. <laughs> no matter how many times you try to take me down, I'll get right back up. Uh, that was a damn life lesson. <laughs> so maybe I don't have to be fully mad at that match. But either uh, way, logically, it was still kind of a mess. Got hit by a freaking golf cart and got up. Anyway, <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> yeah, it's wrestling. Oh, oh giving Josh PTSD flashbacks over here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Vietnam no, no. flashbacks. There, Vietnam flashbacks. There are worse matches than that that give me P PTSD, man. <laughs> <laughs> on that pay-per-view. We'll get to that. On we'll that, that. pay-per-view itself. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're all laying down selling. Uh, Solo Sokoa put Drew through the table. And Kevin Owens did a stunner on Solo. And they, he tried to pick... What? Um, <clears throat> what am I reading? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, Solo. Stunner. <clears throat> No, I, I went back. It, uh, it's a stare down. Um. Uh, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns had a one-two. Uh, Roman Reigns hit a Superman punch. He teased a spear, but Kevin Owens hit a super kick. Then he did a pop-up power bomb and then gave Roman the stunner. Um, tried to pin um, Roman, but then Sami Zayn stopped the ref. Uh, Jimmy Uso did a super kick. He... Uh, Kevin Owens blocked it, and then Sami Zayn gave Kevin Owens a low blow. Um, <coughs> then he seemed kind of remorseful, but then Roman convinced him to go on, and then he gave Kevin Owens a hell of a kick, and Jay Frog splashed Kevin Owens for the win. And yeah, after that, um, they hugged it out, and Sammy, U uh, Sammy Uso... <laughs> I <laughs> call him Sammy Uso. Um, <clears throat> he might as well be. Because Michael Cole, I think, said now he's more than just the honorary Uso. Um, but anyway, Sammy Zayn buried, finally buried the hatchet with Jay Uso. And yeah, uh, that was the match. I gave Rasslin a seven and a half. And Logic a nine. What, uh, and yeah, what did you think about this match? I will say before Ben answers, um, Roman Reigns himself on an episode of SmackDown a few weeks ago did make reference that he was thinking of um, 
changing Sammy's name to officially be Sammy Uso as an actual member oh. of the um, <laughs> bloodline. Oh, damn. Because that, was, Jay that, was, that really was the same Jay segment, I believe, that uh, he got given the new T-shirt. Oh, no, no, no. That was a different segment. That was an entirely oh, okay. different segment. Well. It was the OC segment. It, oh, it was because dang. it was because Roman was um, making fun of Jay Uso, saying, "This is what he said." I'm not going to do his voice, but this is what he said. All of this because you're not feeling Uso. Um. <laughs> that never gets old. That never gets old. That was a great segment. Josh, go ahead. I think the T-shirt segment was when Jay said. I don't give a damn what the tribal chief has to say. <laughs> Roman's face. Yeah. Roman to kill Jey Uso now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, this match, uh, I'll give wrestling a a uh, six because uh, there was a lot that they could have done, uh, which could have improved this. And logic, um, it's gonna be the same as the women's. It's gonna be a no, no, it's not. No, it's not gonna be the same. No, I will double it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give lo logic a four. Uh huh. I would give logic a four because of the storyline uh, that is trying to, to be told. Um. So yeah. Um. Uh, the bloodline one, uh, which was the correct result, um, yeah. and not just because Roman is the champion and the Usos are uh -huh. the tag champions, mm -hmm. not just because of that, but mm -hmm. because they are the bloodline. Uh, the, it is the first war games match of them as a group, so and it could be that the last, uh, depending on how next year goes for them as a group. So they have to win. Um, if this is their one and only time that they're going to enter war games as a group, they have to win. Like it, the, the, there is no question. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I gave um overall this show I gave it wrestling an eight and logic a seven. Uh, what? What do you, your ratings? What I thought this was a decent, another decent WWE pay per view. Uh, yeah, could have had some better stuff. Some things could have been done better, but it was still a decent pay per view. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 um, I'll just well, say this okay. um, as far as I'm concerned, which uh, most people don't care for. Um, Especially on Twitter. Fucking Twitter. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> I will say that war games shouldn't have happened at all. Um, if 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 any cage match should have happened here, it should have been the Elimination Chamber. Um, why? Because it's much more fitting to be at a pay-per-view that is designed to be Elimination-based, Triple H... And there's also the home pay-per-view, the Elimination Chamber itself, debuted on in 2002. Why they haven't had another Elimination Chamber on the pay-per-view it was made for in 20 years? I just, just don't know! <laughs> Instead, yeah, it's just, it's just... They have it on SummerSlam or No Way Out. They give it its own fucking pay-per-view. It's like the money in the bank. They, they had it on the perfect place, but then they took, but then they took it off because, because of greed. <laughs> anyway. Well, <laughs> well, look. If if the Elimination Chamber were at Survivor Series, what for the Universal Championship? The main event be the Universal Championship match. Either that, or it, or it would be a number one contenders match to determine whoever the challenger would be. But yes, um, 
Roman should have defended in the ch- uh, in in the chamber if it was going to be the chamber. Yes. Okay. So. That's it. That's that's not a bad idea. That's that's interesting. It can't it can't have Sami Zayn in it. I know that, but other than that, yeah. Why can't a it good have show? Sami Zayn in it? Mm, no, no, no. I don't think it should. No, no. Elimination chamber? No, no. Um. Well. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my thoughts on the main event. First of all, yeah, there was yeah. a good main event. I enjoyed it. Um, I gave wrestling about seven and a half, and Logic, I gave it an eight. Um, the right people won. Ending, actually. And this was, this was actually a more story-driven match, which I can absolutely enjoy. It's not... And sometimes it's not just about wrestling sometimes. Like, I get this show is called Wrestling and Logic, but sometimes yeah. this is not about wrestling. This yeah. is about the stories that we all tell, yeah. you know? And it makes... And it just makes perfect sense that the Bloodline won. Yeah. Despite their differences. It's been building up for months. I mean, there's there's no other way... Well... But there's, no, there's other ways they could have went about it, but be good for now. Okay? So... That was the uh, end result. I thought this was actually a solid show. I had no problem with this show, except obviously the middle of the goddamn show. Don't get me started. But other than that, good show. Uh, Triple H actually did Survivor Series a little bit more story-driven, a little bit more um, wrestling-driven, which is a, always a good thing. Finally, Survivor Series is all about wrestling. Thank you. Now, the question is, how is he going to book the Royal Rumble? Do all the same. Yeah. We need to the Royal Rumble. We need to match to me right now. You need to go. Oh, oh shit. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Okay, never mind. We'll, we'll get to the Royal Rumble very soon, everybody. We'll need to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll get to it. Full gear on this <laughs> road to WrestleMania. We need to <clears throat> eat the good breakfast. Take whatever meds and that's that'll get their brains wide and write the best, or oh, maybe not write and book the best road to WrestleMania that they can next year. <coughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. All right, but, everybody, that's Survivor Series. Yeah, and then that was another episode of Wrestling and Logic. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode and. Yeah, we will be back for winter is coming. Uh, ben and I, <laughs> I doubt Josh will be there because he wants nothing no. to do with AEW. <laughs> he wants absolutely zero to do with AEW. Josh is not happy about that show at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will be back for winter is coming for our season finale. Then uh, I think we will, uh, we might have a few bonus episodes or review Raw or something. Definitely um, keep an eye I'll, ear out for um, Ben's weekly roundups, um, wrestling roundups, and keep your ears out for um, Life's Opening Radio certified bangers, um, and of course Life's Opening Radio hosted by Josh. Uh, he will have his New Year's episode um, to start the new season of um, Life's Opening Radio, and you know, of course. Uh, and then the next episode of uh, Certified Bangers will be out by the time you hear this. And um, in less than two weeks, it's my birthday. And I'll have a special birthday episode of Certified Bangers. And, and I've made sure that only the best songs that I've listened to in the past couple of weeks make it on that list. And I think it's already a great <laughs> list. <coughs> um. And by the way, we go. I gotta make. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. All right. So season finale is winter is coming. I'm gonna make this known right now. I'm going to review Ring of Honor Final Battle in its entirety as a bonus episode, and I will also do um, a potential um, weekly wrestling roundup and maybe a special Christmas edition of Wrestling Logic Extra. Uh, it depends on what's going on with that. But um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much the rest of the schedule for Wrestling Logic Extra, pretty much all the way down to a T. Yeah. Hey, right. Yeah, that's good. Okay. 
Right, and don't forget to also check out Mysteries of Life Season 3 debuts April 2023. Um, so, yeah, the... Is looking up for content um, and of course sub to my channel I'm gonna be posting a lot more since I'm off for the holidays and by or speaking of holidays I still need to do the thumbnails of certified bangers for Josh uh, I have to do up to episode 12 I think yeah so I'll, I'll surely uh, get I'll get on that um, so 10 11 and 12 yeah I'll get to that uh, when I have time I hope I I <coughs> should have time, so I definitely will get to that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll be back for winter is coming. Um, but until then, this is Chabonator, Josh Jenkins, and Ben Charles. Psst. Signing out.